Now you see me, now you don't. As someone who already doesn't have the best vision out there, I can tell you that it's something that a lot of people take for granted. I mean, if you can't see, how else are you going to watch the rest of my videos? But in all seriousness, we should have an awareness of the deterioration of the body. All aspects of the body, including the ability to view the world. Notice I said awareness though, not fear, because as usual, there are steps that we can take and things that we can provide our body to combat this deterioration. And as always, it all comes back to nutrition. There's one nutrient in particular that plays a huge role in saving your sight, and I think that warrants recognition. So without further ado, let's get back into the true nutrients. Let's get this out of the way real quick. Vitamin A is a vitamin, the first of its kind that we're covering in depth here, so I want to take a minute to go over the difference between vitamins and the other type of micronutrient, minerals. While minerals are inorganic elements, the elements that you'll find on the periodic table, vitamins are complex organic compounds made of multiple different elements, but always carbon. As you can see, for example, vitamin A's chemical structure is complex, containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a particular formation. The presence of carbon carbon atoms is why vitamins are exclusively found in living matter, plant and animal foods, while minerals originate in soil and water. Anyway, vitamin A, also known as retinol with an O, has a few other forms, retinol with a Y, retinol with an A, and retinoic acid. Retinol with an O and retinol with a Y are the most commonly found naturally in animal foods, and they are converted to retinol with an A, the active form in the body. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin, meaning that it needs fat to be absorbed, thus it is better when consumed alongside dietary lipids. When this condition is met, vitamin A is absorbed at a very high 70 to 90% rate, and being a fat-soluble vitamin, it can be stored in tissue for later use. Usually, it's stored in the liver in the form of retinol with a Y. Vitamin A used to be required on a nutrition label, but as of 2016, it's not anymore because deficiencies are far less common now. A lot of it has to do with a better understanding of the nutrients and accessibility of foods that provide it, as well as awareness of the difference between actual vitamin A and animal foods foods and pro-vitamin A carotenoids that are found in plant foods. The main reason I covered minerals on this channel first is because each vitamin is inherently more complex for one reason or another. And in the case of vitamin A, it's mainly due to the existence of carotenoids. Carotenoids are fat-soluble compounds, and while they can be found in animal foods like eggs, dairy, and seafood, they are the only way to get vitamin A from plant foods as they are a precursor to the nutrient. There's over 600 different types of carotenoids, but they fall under two main types, carotenes and xanthophils. While both have antioxidants benefits of their own, the difference is that xanthophils contain oxygen in their chemical structure while carotenes do not. There are six main carotenoids found commonly in food. Beta-carotene, alpha-carotene, lycopene, beta-cryptoxanthin, lutein, and zeaxanthin. The first three are carotenes, while the latter three are xanthophils. Now here's where it gets interesting. Not all carotenoids have the ability to be converted into vitamin A, but it's also not as simple as carotenes can and xanthophils can't. Of these main six, it's actually alpha and beta -carotene carotene and beta-cryptoxanthin that are convertible, while lycopene, lutein, and zeaxanthin are not. So you can have something like a tomato, which is chock full of carotenoids, mainly lycopene, but it doesn't actually contain much vitamin A potential. Now, carotenoids are absorbed at a 5 to 30 percent rate, far less than animal vitamin A. Though unlike some other nutrients, cooking can actually increase bioavailability of carotenoids. And then, as I said, for them to actually be used as vitamin A, they need to be converted in the body. And the conversion rates are... Well, well, they're not great. Alpha and beta carotene have an average conversion rate of 12 to 1, with beta cryptoxanthin being converted at an average rate of 24 to 1. Fortunately, there's a medley of reliable carotenoid dense foods that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Now, we're going to be excluding the benefits of carotenoids in this video and focusing on the functions of vitamin A itself. I will most likely do a full video on all relevant antioxidants at some point, and you can bet that carotenoids will be in that. Anyway, vitamin A proper does a lot of important stuff in the body. What it's best known for is its benefits to eye health and preservation. Retinol combines with opsin, a protein, to form rhodopsin, which is needed for vision function, especially in dim lighting. It also helps to protect the cornea, the eye's outermost layer, and the conjunctiva, a thin membrane that covers the surface of your eye from age-related macular degeneration. 
important. Vitamin A is also important for reproductive function, playing a role in sperm and egg synthesis by acting as a signaling molecule that initiates the process. It's also needed for the proper development of the fetus after conception. Vitamin A is also used in immune health, being involved in the creation of certain white blood cells that protect against unnecessary inflammation and harmful pathogens. It also supports mucous membranes, which protect against pathogens and irritants as well. Also in the immunity realm, vitamin A helps prevent certain cancers with fairly definitive proof that it helps combat lung cancer, especially in smokers, while it's also believed to combat other cancers like bladder, breast, and ovarian. And to rapid fire off a few other functions, vitamin A also manages osteoclasts, special cells that break down old or damaged bone tissue. It's important for the growth and maintenance of certain organs like your heart and lungs, and it's also used for gene transcription. Now, how much vitamin A do you actually need for your body to pull all this off? The recommended daily intake for vitamin A is 900 micrograms for men and 700 micrograms for women, that being 0.9 milligrams and 0.7 milligrams. Vitamin A deficiency is rare in the States, but less so in more developing countries, largely due to vitamin A-rich foods not being as accessible. Vitamin A deficiency is a leading cause of preventable blindness, according to the World Health Organization, and a lack of vitamin A can also increase risk of birth complications and raises the chances of death for both the mother and the baby. Its absence can also contribute to a variety of skin issues, joint issues, anemia, and infections. The recommended upper limit for vitamin A is 3,000 micrograms or 3 milligrams, and this is to help avoid toxicity. Toxicity may occur due to overconsumption. It's possible to get too much from food, but it often is due to oversupplementation. Speaking of which, vitamin A supplementation is rarely needed, as actively seeking out foods rich in the nutrient is fairly simple. Anyway, vitamin A is also stored in the body, so storing too much can be unhealthy too or even fatal if it gets out of hand. Vitamin A toxicity side effects include poor vision, joint pain, poor appetite, nausea, sensitivity to sunlight, poor skin health, and poor liver health. And for the record, high carotenoid content is not as associated with toxicity, but it could contribute to issues in the heart and lungs in extreme amounts. Overall, vitamin A is one of the easier vitamins to manage so long as you know where to find it. While vitamin A isn't everywhere like some other essential nutrients, it can be found in a few popular foods, both animal and plant foods. First, in animal sources, vitamin A is absurdly dense in liver, which makes sense as that's where it's stored. It can also be found in some fish like tuna and salmon, as well as many dairy products like cheese and cream. Probably the best source of vitamin A proper, though, is over-reliable eggs, with a dozen of them providing your entire daily needs. However, most of us are not Gaston, and we're going to mix in some good plant sources too. While these plant numbers may seem higher across the board, keep in mind that they need to be converted to vitamin A by the body. The numbers themselves are the average total of beta-carotene, alpha-carotene, and beta-cryptoxanthin, the three most common pro-vitamin A carotenoids per 100 grams. And you'll notice a few trends here, like foods with an orange color being higher because beta-carotene has an influence on that color. These orange foods including carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, cantaloupe, bell pepper, and so on. Another reliable source is greens, including spinach, romaine lettuce, collards, and chard. And many other fruits and vegetables contain some, but I only have so much space on screen. Chances are you already include a few of these in your diet regularly, but if not, it wouldn't hurt to start now. Now, if you enjoyed this video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe as I have plenty more of these on the way. I also encourage you to share it with someone who you think might find it interesting or helpful. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other nutrients you think deserve an entire in-depth breakdown video like this. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.